Most of you probably know Kyle Fischel. He, uh, he's another vlogger and I really enjoy his, uh, his vlogs. And he has a um, sponsorship with Rad Poker and he's been talking about it for a couple weeks now. And, you know, I watch his vlogs and I listen to what he says. He says, jump, I say, how high? And uh, he said to check it out. So I went over and checked out Rad Poker and uh, I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. It was basically a single table sit and go turbo heads up tournament. And uh, the winner gets rating points, the loser loses rating points. And it kind of keeps track of how you do. And uh, there's a leaderboard and you go up and down. And it seemed like a lot of fun. Uh, later I was contacted by Rad Poker and asked if I wanted to, uh, to talk about their product. And uh, I normally don't do product endorsements unless I actually believe in the stuff. So I told him I've been on the site and I have played it and I do enjoy it. So here I am talking to you about it. So if you guys haven't checked out Rad Poker yet, uh, please do so. There's a link down in the description. Um, I'm going to be on there every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And if you guys want to take some of my virtual Dougie Doe uh, by playing me heads up in Rad Poker, just hop on and I'll be there. It's hard to say whether you'll actually get uh, seated with me because there are other players. Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time, look for magic, take some of my money, some of my rating points. Welcome back to the vlog. I'm going to be playing at Capital Casino today in our normal 1-3 game. I don't have a lot of time to play, only have like an hour or two, so it's gonna be a short session, but still coming to some interesting spots. I played a couple of hands, I would say, poorly. Anyway, I also wanna say thank you to all those new subscribers that uh, signed up uh, recently. I really appreciate you coming aboard and joining the rest of us. Um, as for my longtime subscribers who have been there since day one, I really appreciate you guys. You guys have gave me the encouragement to continue on. Anyway, sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. We buy into our normal 1-3 game for $500. Sit around for a little while, ante and off. Haven't got much to play until I look down at two tens in the big blind. We get three limpers trying to get a cheap flop. I decide to raise to 20. Just look in the either force them to put more money in or give up those weak hands. They all decided to give up the weak hands, so we win a very small pot, but it's the first chips that went our direction today, so we'll take them and uh, move on to the next one. I look at king-queen offsuit and the cutoff. We had two limpers and I raised to 20, and only the two limpers put in the call, so we're headed three ways to a flop with 64 in. And the flop is actually pretty good for my range, but not very good for my particular hand. It comes ace, jack, seven with two clubs. Here's a little tell that I picked up. The uh, person on the top of the screen to the right, the way he checks and then the way he scoots and looks through his cards, shuffling them, usually indicates someone with a draw and not a pair. If someone had an ace or jack, they would know it. They wouldn't have to do this shuffle to look at their cards. With both limpers checking to me, I decided this would be a good spot to put in the C-bet, and I'm trying to make my C-bets a little bit stronger, so I make it 35. I don't want anyone to stick around with some sort of uh, gut shot or backdoor draws. I want to kind of limit their hand possibilities. I get one caller from the late position limper, and the way he acts and the way he holds his cards and peeks at them makes me believe that he's on a draw. And when the jack of spades comes on the turn, I decided this would be a great opportunity to continue. I don't know if it counts as a bluff when you bet with the best hand, but uh, we take this one down. I'm in the big blind with 10-8 suited. There was no raise, so we get to see a free flop, six-way action. And the flop is fairly good for our hand. It comes queen, queen, four with two clubs. So we got a flush draw. We check it with five other players, and it checks around rather quickly. Turn card comes as a five of diamonds. 
I figure this might be a good spot to this take a stab, but I'm greeted with some bad news. I get min raised to 20 from a middle position player. Now this player can be playing a little bit tricky. He also can be bluffing quite often. So I have to proceed carefully. The type of hands I put him on is of course a queen or maybe pocket fours, pocket fives, or he could have turned some sort of flush draw, maybe a straight draw. The river card comes as a deuce of clubs. I decided to check. If he had a missed draw, he's gonna bet. If he has a full house, he's gonna bet. So I figure I'd rather just check call than to lead into him. So I check and he bets 40, which is pretty good sizing. It looks like him probably beat, but since all the queens should miss, I'm only really concerned with pocket fours and pocket fives. And he ends up showing queen deuce of hearts. So I caught the only card in the entire deck that would cost me another $40. I looked down at two jacks on the button after three people limped into the pot and thought, man, this is a great opportunity. I'm just going to race to 25 and get it heads up or maybe get one caller. But instead, I get everyone calling. Well, not everyone. The small blind folded, big blind called, and the three limpers put in the call. So we're having 126 in the pot and we're going five ways to a flop. Uh, action, I can't complain about the action. I mean, anyone who limps and calls a $25 bet, you know, more power to them. Flop is as good as you can get. Jack, deuce, deuce. It might be too good. It's gonna be really hard to try to get any action off this hand. I'm trying to figure out whether I'm gonna lead real small on this flop like I would do with most of my range or whether I'll just check it back and hope someone catches up. But I don't have to worry about that when someone in middle position leads for $50. I, from the way he led, I don't think he has anything. I'm praying he has a deuce, but I really don't think he does. I think he's just like taking a stab at such a dry flop, trying to represent something. And if no one has a jack, they're all gonna bail. Anyway, I put in the call. We see a turn card of a queen of diamonds. He checks, checks rather quickly. I don't think he has much. Most players, I would check this hand back, hoping that they'll take another stab at, at, on the river. But this player is capable of playing back at you with nothing. So I gave him the opportunity to do so. I put out a one-third size pot bet, hoping that he would play back. Uh, after him thinking about it for a while, he decides to let it go. So I guess the check back would have been the optimal play. The game's getting a little bit short. I think we're playing six-handed on this one. I raise with queen nine of clubs from the low jack and end up getting two callers. Flop is decent. It comes jack, jack, nine with two diamonds. So we got two pair. Our only real concern is someone ha having a straight draw, flush draw, or perhaps a jack. But when check two, I'm going to put out a small continuation bet just to see where I'm at. And I get one caller. So with Heads up, going to a turn, we see probably one of the worst cards in the deck. It's an eight of hearts. Eight of diamonds would have been the worst one, but this is pretty darn close. If he had me beat, and he still has me beat, and if he was behind with some sort of straight draw, he might be ahead of me now. So I checked it over to him. He bets 45. Uh, he's an action player. He could be doing this and messing around a little bit. So I decided to give him a little action which I think in hindsight is definitely a mistake. I should just let this one go. But I put the call in, see a river card of a queen. I check it quickly. He quickly checks it back. So I thought maybe I have some chance of this and I turn over my hand and he shows queen 10 for the turn straight. So he takes this one down. I gave too much action, lost 45 more than I should. There's one early limper and we look at two aces from the cutoff, how sweet it is. We put in a race to 15. We probably can go a little bit bigger if we chose to, but we end up getting three callers. So we go four ways to a flop of queen, nine, deuce, rainbow. Pretty darn good flop. First person checks, next person puts in a very small bet of $15. It seemed like he just wants to name his own price for some sort of draw in my mind. I'm not gonna let him get away with that. I raised to 45. I don't want anyone to overcall and get in cheap for $15. The uh, person who originally checked thinks for a while before releasing his hand. 
and I just get the original better to put in the call. At this point, I'm putting him on some sort of draw or a queen. More likely a draw. Someone with a queen would probably bet a little bit stronger. Someone with jack 10, though, this would be a good time to name your own price with a $15 bet. So I'm going to be real cautious if I see a king or an eight turn up. Instead, we get a four of spades. This does put a backdoor flush draw up on the board. But when he checks me, I'm just going to continue because I think I have the best hand. And I'm going to continue on the larger size. I put in a two-thirds pot bet, $100. This is going to be a little bit painful for someone with a straight draw to call. Someone with a queen probably would fold also. Um, he thinks for just a short amount of time before putting in the call. So I think he might have picked up some additional equity with the four of spades. So he might have some sort of backdoor flush draw. River card is a king of hearts, probably the worst card. I check it, he says, oh, I have the nine, and uh, I show my aces and take it down. He picked up a flush draw with the nine of spades in his hand. The game wasn't as good as it was when we first sat down, and we had to go anyway, so we rack up our $235 profit and head on home. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate your support. Here are our totals for today. And just a reminder, if you want to play me heads up, online go to rad poker download the app i will be on there tuesday night at 7 p.m pacific hop in there see if you can get some of my uh, virtual dougie dough until then take care run good at the tables and we'll see you next time